Hey, you fluffer schnoots. So this video is like an update of the last video, which was an update video, but this one I want to talk about my hardware because I tend to do these videos, these types of, let me show you my desktop videos annually, maybe biannually, but we can look at this one like a mini distro delve that's actually on my PC. So let's get everything up and going here. And there, we've got K Info Center on the left, we have NeoFetch on the right. This is obviously KDE, and I'll talk about the desktop in just a second, but let's talk about the hardware specs. The actual machine that I'm running this on is my workstation, and it's a laptop. It's an Asus ROG Strix G513. I did an unboxing on this, and it's a really good rig, but I need to make another video kind of doing a post-use review, because I've got opinions on it, but the hardware is super, super good. The GPU is an NVIDIA RTX 3060 Mobile Edition. The built-in AMD graphics are good. I can't believe they still use ATI as an internal name. The CPU is a Ryzen 7 4800H, which is the same CPU as my last laptop, which was a Lenovo Legion. But you can see that I'm running Debian, Debian Linux 12. I was running Bookworm, so Debian testing before Bookworm became stable, and now I'm on stable Bookworm and it's kicking butt. I cleaned up my sources recently because it was a bit of a mess here, but I'm using the basic Debian sources list file with main, contrib, non-free, non-free firmware, which is a new thing for Bookworm. And then in my sources list D, I've got Debian multimedia list, which I'm actually going to remove because that thing is nasty, and so is licorice, actually. It was so bad that I left a comment for myself if I ever thought about re-enabling it because it caused so many problems last time. It screwed things up. And the way it did it was that it switched all of the multimedia packages to the Deb multimedia repo, which was maintained at a different cadence. So every time something updated on Debian, it would just break everything. The licorice kernel is still enabled, but I'm actually going to disable it because I was hoping for better performance and instead I got stuttering and audio pops. So the licorice kernel is not for me. This is Debian 12 Bookworm with kernel version 6.1. I'm using Flatpak to install and manage my apps. No snaps here. The shell says it's bash, but it's actually fish. I'm all about cool tools making my life easier, and Fish is like Bash, but better, just like Nala is a bit like Apt, but better. This is KDE Plasma, so let's bring back K Info Center. It's KDE Plasma version 5.27.5, KDE Frameworks version 5.103, and Qt version 5.15.8. So very likely not the latest, greatest, most cutting edge stuff, because this is Debian stable, but I am all right with that. The graphics platform is X11. That's right, I've all but given up on trying to make Wayland work. Like, it works, but you get tend to get lower frame rates in games, there are features that don't work, like in OBS and Discord and stuff. Wayland is good for most things in most use cases, but for gamers and things like that, X11 is just the way to go. And my opinion is strong on that. Maybe I'll make a video talking about X versus Wayland in the future, but I do, however, use Pipewire and it doesn't tell us the version like that, uh, like that. Pipewire version 0.3.65, and I use it for screen sharing in Discord. So you can use this strange little tool called Helvum, and you can pipe your audio into different sources and outputs. This is like Jack, if you're familiar with Jack, it's like kind of the same thing. Overall, my system runs pretty darn good. I guess it's like a hybrid leading edge mixed with some old school tech. This is probably about as close to an EGOS desktop setup as it gets. I tend to just favor the tool that works over whatever is the latest and greatest. I've just been burned too many times by bleeding edge, but also supposedly stable tools and things that, you know, I'll try something new and then if it doesn't work, I'm just gonna go back to the old stuff. So like Pipewire is good for audio, but X11 is, is where I'm gonna stay for my display stack. Right now I'm running NVIDIA driver version 5.25.105 and I haven't had any issues with NVIDIA on this machine at all. Runs super, super good. Switching between graphics works good. We can look at NVTOP, detects both of my devices and we can look through here and see, it looks like only the AMD card is in use right now, as it should be. No, actually, there you go. SDDM is running on NVIDIA for some reason. That seems like a bug. 
because the main display session shouldn't be running on the integrated, or it shouldn't be running on the discrete GPU. But anyway, that's a problem for later EG. All right, we can talk about the desktop now. So this is my KDE setup. This is about as, um, I wouldn't say this is a typical or simple desktop. It is definitely a combination of all of the different desktops that I've used and enjoyed over the years. So we've got desktop icons. I don't know why people hate them so much. They're just app launchers. I mean, it's no different from going down here and clicking a shortcut or going in here and clicking a game. The desktop icons tend to match whatever the background is. So Kwin or whatever process is doing this has decided that the, the icons should be blue because the background is mostly blue. So if we change it up, so it'll take something like this. I think this should turn them green. There you go. So then once the cache updates, when I was moving stuff around, I don't know if you noticed, but I have wobbly windows. Now, hopefully X isn't tearing all over the place, but it, it looks super smooth to me. High frame rates. I don't see any tearing or anything crazy going on. I know that wobbly windows is <laughs> kind of a novelty and it doesn't serve any functional purpose. Well, purpose besides making me happy because I like it. I, I dig this. It's just kind of fun desktop stuff is being lost, I think. And that makes me sad. Can you even get wobbly windows on GNOME? Like, I'm sure that you can, but... We all know GNOME, it's probably an extension, and then an update will break it or whatever. I've had wobbly windows on this machine since, basically since I installed it. And I don't, I actually haven't told you guys the history of this machine. So it's Debian 12. We came from Debian testing, so it was kind of a rolling distro. And it's a, it's a pretty standard KDE desktop. Like, I'm not doing anything crazy. This is Breeze Dark. The window decorations are Windows K10 Dark, which I don't think it's even maintained anymore, but I really like that blue outline. A lot of themes just add a little bit of drop shadow to the background, and if you have a dark desktop, then you can't even really tell what's in the foreground or background because that shadow blends in with everything. So this really sharp blue outline helps me see where things are, and then it turns to like white. And another cool thing that I set up with all of my effects, let me just go to the effects section. So in KDE and Kwin, you can go to desktop effects and there's all these things that you can do, but you may notice that these windows are darker. See this one just like faded out. And that's an effect I have, dim inactive. And I go back and forth with this one. Sometimes it works, sometimes it makes things too dark. If I go to take a screenshot of something and you can see that it's like the saturation is just kind of wrong. It came through this time, but sometimes it'll still be dark but I don't do this very often. It's not that big of a deal for me. Have some other effects. I think when you minimize, it goes away fast, but when you close something like this, it fades out instead of shrinking or whatever. You know, the thing is, this is my workstation and I sit here and work on it like every day. So I, I like a little eye candy. This isn't a server. I don't need super good performance all of the time. Basically only when I'm gaming and I have the compositor turned on and set to turn off when I have a full screen game going. So. Compositor doesn't get in its own way, it just shuts itself down. This has been kind of a troublesome feature in the past for KDE, but I haven't had any issues with it. And I think in another video, I showed you guys a, a script called Fix Panel, and it's just this little two-line script that used to be three-line, but I guess this disowned thing isn't needed anymore, and I, I never have to use this, because Plasma never crashes anymore. So yeah, this is my desktop. What else do I show you guys in these videos? I can show you my file system though. I've got this bin folder, which is a carryover from my OpenSUSE days. There was always just a lowercase bin folder in the home folder and I put just things that I can like double click and launch in here. I believe I've added it to my path too, but I still have like the local bin. This is just, I don't know, it's a thing. I got documents, downloads, I've got games. This is a game folder and I have my Steam library sim linked here. So if I needed to get to my Steam apps easily without going to the hidden folder, I can just get them from here. I'm pretty sure it's Lutris that creates the game folder. So if you use Lutris, you're probably going to have this folder anyway. So I just slapped a cool little game icon on it. We got music, pictures, public folder. I've got all my shares here. I've got distro delves. When I do a distro delve, you want to do one now, actually? How does video playback work on this machine? I'm, this machine is such a beast that it even if it struggles, it probably won't show it here. H265 at 4K is probably going to be the toughest one. And it's definitely working my CPU, but it looks great. So for future distro delves, this is how smooth it should be. There's just, there's no stuttering, there's nothing. You can see the mountains in the background, it's like super crisp. 
This is what I would expect from DistroDelve's test machines. I got a source folder with all of my source codes. I've got a video folder, which is kind of a cluttered mess. I've got, it's, it says videos, but there's way more than just videos in there. And of course I have my VMs. I want to get back to VMware and make some videos on that. And I've got a few different VMs. Windows VM, got to have that. So generally speaking, games run just fine on this machine, like performance and everything. But loading into games, on some games it takes like 10, 15 minutes. I don't know what it is. Halo Infinite here, it's going to take probably 10 minutes to get into the game just to get the main menu. And then everything on the main menu is just going to sit there and load. And now I will say that I play with someone occasionally that runs AMD graphics all the time. So no NVIDIA there. They can load into games like Halo Infinite in probably five minutes. They still have to wait at this loading screen, but it goes really fast. So unfortunately, I'm inclined to say that it might be an NVIDIA thing, but I'm not exactly sure. So I'm, I'm trying to drag this out because so you can see that it's just, we're just not getting anywhere. It's taking forever to load. And then there's games like No Man's Sky, which run basically flawlessly on Linux, but it always has. So I guess I'm here to report that there aren't any issues with No Man's Sky on Linux. I figured the last update video had No Man's Sky on it, so it seems apt to end this one on No Man's Sky. I hope that you liked it, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. If you really like to lend a hand and support the channel, I have YouTube channel memberships now. I also have Patreon. But I want to talk a bit about channel memberships because I looked and I have a channel member. How cool is that? It's Axel. So at the end of these videos, I'm going to have a credit scroll and it's going to list all of the supporters and things. And it's going to start with YouTube channel members and then follow up with patrons and then like credits for any music and stuff like that that I've used in the video. I think in this one, I'm going to play you guys out with music, just some stuff that I've written. It's nothing fancy, but it's just something I'll pick up my guitar and play, and that's what I'll play the credit scroll out to. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.